Okay, uh, we're back again, uh, Brad and Alex, and we are going to write the first set of um, subsystems and commands for, um, for our robot. You'll notice there's a couple of things here that have some errors in it. That's because we deleted, uh, back when we created the uh, sample program, we deleted some of the examples, which uh, still had references in some of these other files. And as we go through the files, we'll uh, be deleting those, so the errors will go away. So the first thing we want to do is create a subsystem that corresponds to our claw. So you right click new and you'll notice how it shows up here but if it's the first time you're using it it won't so you have to click other you'll get a dialog and you'll select a new subsystem and these are the four we'll be using throughout the video and from now on we'll just right click it'll give you a pop-up like this and our subsystem is a claw and there it is and the claw has one motor so we have a motor. So inside of the uh, um, inside of each subsystem, you declare all of the motors and sensors that the subsystem uses. And in this case, it just uses a motor; it doesn't use any subsystems. It was a particularly uh, uh, this is a particularly easy subsystem because it has no feedback. And so, in fact, what we've got to do is we're we're just going to operate it um, by by uh, um, time, and you'll see that in a couple of minutes. So we, we declare the claw motor, which is a uh, uh, a Jaguar. So that fixes that. Now the default command is going to be do nothing, which the default command runs when no other commands are running. And we, when nothing is happening, you just want to make sure that the claw isn't trying to open forever or close forever or otherwise tear itself apart. So you'll see, you'll get the idea of, of what this whole default command stuff is about as we go forward. You'll see more examples of it. But the idea, the idea is that if no other command is trying to manipulate the claw, then the claw should be doing nothing, and we're going to make a command that just sends a value of zero to the motor, which makes it stop trying to move. Now we're just adding a couple of methods to the claw to make it move in the open direction and move in the closed direction. And so we have a method called open and a method called closed. And then, um, and then maybe another method that uh, stops it or doesn't do anything. Um, so, so we in, in this particular case, these are little, um, these are small uh, VEX motors. Uh, we're just going to go full speed. Um, you may not want to do this with um, uh, like more more grown up motors like that come in the FRC kit. Um, you may want to have more reasonable speed values. So we have open, we have close, we have do nothing. Um, which does which makes the claw not do anything, and so so naturally the value would be zero. That st just stops the motor. And uh, what's wrong with close there? Um, oh, void. It void. Oh, we didn't put in the return type, and and of course these don't return any values, so the return type is void. So these three methods implement the three capabilities of the claw. Now you'll notice there's an error here. We have this uh, set default command of. Uh, uh, claw do nothing, but we haven't written claw do nothing yet, so there's there's a that's why it's 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 like kind of underlined in red. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go into command base and replace the example subsystem that no longer exists with the claw. Okay, so in in this spot in command base, you want to define all of um, your subsystems. Okay, and the reason is because all the commands will subclass or extend command base. And this makes um, all of these values very accessible, so it's easy to find them. Uh, it's easier to use them in the program. So all I have to do is write claw later anywhere else in the program, and it will and it will find the claw. Okay. So now we're going to create the default command, which is do nothing. So we create a new command. We call it claw do nothing. And that's because that's what we called it before. Is is when we set the default command for the claw subsystem. And, and so this literally, uh, it requires the claw. So when you say that this requires the claw, what that means is that when this command is running, it's using the claw. It's using the claw subsystem. And the reason you have to do that is because if this command is a default command and it's running all the time when nothing else is happening, then when you uh, later on when you tell the claw to open or close, and we'll write those commands in a minute, those will also require the claw. And... Um, 
and and so they'll bump out the default command because they both there's a conflict. They both require the claw. So if there's anything that's running at the time that's using the claw, it gets preempted, and the new command takes its place. You'll notice for this these commands, there are a whole bunch of methods here, and we we kind of fill them in. The initialize method is called before the command runs the first time, and uh, we don't really have to do anything um, to initialize it because all we're going to do is just set the claw speed to zero by saying claw do nothing. That's setting that's calling the do nothing method on the claw uh, class. There's an is finished method on the on the uh, uh, claw do nothing. Well, so it's never finished because this is this is sort of the default command that's running. So it's always just setting the motor value to zero. And so unless there's some other command running that's trying to use the claw, this thing's always going to be there. It should never say that it's finished. And you'll see the end and interrupted used a little bit later. Right. So now we can update the import and the error goes away. And we can create the open claw command. So So the, the open claw command is, uh, uh, again, very simple. All it's doing is it's uh, telling the claw to open. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because there is no feedback. There's no potentiometer, no limit switches, or anything like that on the claw. So what we want to do in this case is we just want to run the, um, the motor for the claw in the open direction for uh, eight tenths of a second. We kind of decided that's what it took to get the thing to be open. And, um, and, and so you might do that with a motor like a window motor, where you can just kind of run it for a while, even if it hits a stop and it doesn't burn out the motor, you know, if you don't do it for too, too long. And so um, there's, there's uh, some special stuff built into commands called timeouts. And so we're setting the timeout on this command to eight tenths of a second. That means that it will start a timer going uh, when, the when, the, when this initializes, it will look at that timeout value and, we'll, and it, will set it, it will set this timer going. And then we just compare what we call the is timed out method um, in the is finished part of this command so that um, um, every time the is finished method is executed, it will check to see if it's timed out. And if it has, then it will return true and then it will say that it's finished. So it will run for eight tenths of a second. All right, so the next command is closed claw, which is the same basic idea. We close it slightly longer just to make sure we're all the way closed and to make sure we have a good grip on the soda. So, Because we don't want the soda to get away. I want my soda. So this is going to be exactly the same as the other one, except instead of uh, calling the open method on the claw, we're just going to call the close method on the claw. And, and so you'll see, uh, pretty simple. I mean, we're really just writing, let me count them, one, two, three, four lines of code to make this work. So pretty straightforward. Um, and that's it for the claw. Now we can bind it to buttons. Right. So we really, this is actually very cool. Um, one of the really nice features of this command-based programming model is that we created these objects, these joystick button objects. And, and what that lets you do is just to bind buttons so that when you press them, it runs commands. So uh, the first thing we have to do is create a joystick object. And so, um, and that's because we have this joystick. It's actually a Logitech gamepad that's plugged into joystick port one or into USB port one. Um, and you can arrange which ones are which in the driver station. And then we're making a new button, um, which is a joystick button. And so it if we tell it which joystick and we tell it which button that should be that for, it should be for that button. Um, which actual button it is. And we're going to make a few more buttons too, like button two, which is um, another joystick button, which will be uh, on the same joystick, so it's stick, and it will be button two. And then we create the constructor, which will allow us to bind these buttons to commands. So when button one is pressed, we want it to open the claw. So we do a new open claw command, and button two when pressed, and you'll notice there's some other things, when released and while held. So it doesn't necessarily have to be when it's pressed. It can run for the duration of while it's held. But in this case, we just want it to run when it's pressed. 
So this is pretty cool. So what's happening is that whenever the button is pressed, um, it automatically will just call that method. You don't have to do anything else but write this one line of code. And it will bind the button to the command. And then you're done. So, one, so Well, there's one last thing. Oh, one last thing. That's right. There's a minor. I'm just going to fix a few minor things left over. So we'll comment that out, and we'll come back to this in the last video. But that's some code that lets you set up your autonomous program. We're getting rid of the imports for the examples, which don't exist anymore. And now we're ready to run it. And now we're ready to run it, and we can uh, show you this thing running. But that was that was it. You can see that the little bit of code we wrote, we wrote got the claw running. It got the basis of the program there. And, uh, and you'll see us a little bit later uh, expand the program to be much more full-featured and do all the tricks that you saw in that first video. All right. So when I press the button, it opens the claw, and when I press the other button, it closes. So button one opens, and button two closes, which is what we expect from the code we wrote. And obviously, you can pick up the soda, and it holds it. So we know that these commands work, and now all we need to do, we can use them when we build bigger commands later.